in lesson six, we um, investigated order of operations and why we have an order so that everyone comes up with the same answer. So I taught the students a method that I think will help them every single time. They already knew the acronym PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents. I had them write M and D on the same line to remind them to multiply or divide whichever comes first from left to right. And a and S, add or subtract, whichever comes first from left to right. For the students, I would like them to write this acronym down every time they do an order of operations problem to help them slow down and think about the work they're actually doing. We don't have parentheses in this problem. We don't have exponents. Now we need to multiply or divide whichever comes first from left to right. So I asked the students to box the multiplication they would be doing first. So this is 35 and bring down everything that they do not use. Okay, now there's still more multiplication. You box whatever is to the left and the right of the sign. Two times eight gives you a product of 16. So I'm gonna carry everything down that I didn't use. Now all my multiplication and division is complete and I'm just left with addition and subtraction. You would do addition or subtraction, whichever comes first from left to right. 35 minus 16 is 19. Then I bring down my plus two. And I box my final step. The answer for this expression should be 21. That was a relatively easy one. They will increasingly get harder. The second one I would like them to try is this one. Again, hopefully encouraging them to write down PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. This one whew, looks like a lot is going on. There are two sets of parentheses. So I'm gonna start with this set first because it comes first in order from left to right. The exponent is outside of the parentheses, so I'm gonna do its inside first. Two times six is 12. That exponent belongs to that 12. And I'm gonna bring down exactly everything that I didn't use. I still have parentheses, but I look at this parentheses and I see a couple of things going on. I see multiplication and exponents. So now I have to decide in what order to do those. And I'm gonna go back to my order. Exponents come before multiplication and division. So I asked the students to do a bigger box for this set of parentheses. And we're gonna have to box four to the third power or four cubed first. I am gonna require that the students do exponent proof for me at the side of their paper because the most common mistake here will be four the base times three the exponent, which is 12. But I want them to slow down. Four times four is 16. I use the check mark technique. 16 times four gives them a product of 64 for their exponents. And they can bring down eight times 64. When you multiply eight times 64, you get 512. The students must remember there are things in their expression that they have not evaluated yet. They all need to be brought down. Now that I've done my parentheses, all of them, I have to go to my exponents. Here is another set of exponents, 12 to the second power, or 12 squared. 12 times 12 for proof is 144. So I'm gonna bring that back over to my paper. I'm gonna bring down my plus five, 12, and my plus one. I look for multiplication and division. I don't have any. Now I'm gonna add or subtract whichever comes first from left to right. This is gonna give me a sum of 656. I'm gonna bring down my plus one and my answer is gonna be 657. Okay, for the last two, number three, it looks like it has a decimal in it, which is exciting because decimals are a sixth grade fluency, meaning that they have to be able to do them without a calculator. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I'm gonna do my parentheses first. I'm gonna do this a big box here. Inside my parentheses, I have parentheses, so I'm gonna do this set first because they're in order from left to right. Bring down everything else. Now I'm gonna do this set of parentheses, which is nine, and I'm gonna bring down everything else. I'm gonna add or subtract whichever comes first from left to right and bring down everything else. And the sum of these two is 94. 
Now I'm going to bring down my times one and six one hundredths. I always tell the kids to line up their decimal multiplication like there wasn't a decimal in the numbers at all. I think it helps them understand that the number with the more digits should go on top. As they do their multiplication for this problem, they should get a product that looks like this. And there are two decimal places in their factors, so there should be two in their product. And the answer should be 99 and 64 one hundredths. I told the students that I was going to do number four for them, but I lied. I want them to try this on their own and see if they can follow the directions that I just gave. Um, have a great weekend.